to go ahead and close it. All right, so I think we've covered the basics. This has been a, a very introductory uh, webinar aimed at showing you the, the way that Engage uses this product and the way that we think many other organizations can use the product. Are there any other questions based on just the basics of how to use uh, OCS or the mock client or a CWA? I'll give you just a moment just in case you do have a question. I guess while we're waiting, Scott, there, I mean, you showed the how OCS can integrate with uh, Outlook, but it's um, – we're also doing it internally and with other clients. I was integrating with Microsoft CRM. We've integrated with different, uh, with SharePoint, with other websites. Um, we've integrated with the the, uh, the Surface device. So there's many uses where you can include uh, the presence, say, of your team members, especially, say, within SharePoint, and be able to, all right, this, Scott and I work on the same project. I'm in SharePoint. I see my documents. I have a question. There's Scott right there. I can ping him and, and ask him a question very quickly. Um, and what's the um, you want to tell them while you're pulling up the your your poster there? Um, what the I guess what the second or third or, or fourth uh, webinar in the series is going to be? Yeah, right. Uh, before I do that, just one real quick thing I wanted to show you uh, and Communicator Web Access clients. I did forget to show you. This little icon here, that it looks like the uh, Earth, I think, is what it's supposed to be. Basically, that's an indicator that this client is federated. This is actually a Microsoft uh, employee, and we're federated with Microsoft.com, so we're able to communicate with all of the uh, same benefits we have with OCS internally. We can do the same with uh, Microsoft.com. Uh, federated users, and I could just as easily initiate a session with Sean as I could with anybody within my organization. So this goes back to Oleg's question about the infrastructure. Uh, this is a very busy poster, but it's extremely um, detailed in what's involved behind the scenes of what's going on. And what I will be doing in the future is setting up webinars based on these different workflows or workloads. You see we have the IAM and Presence workload, application sharing, AV and web conferencing, and enterprise voice. And each one of these you know, certainly deserves a session by itself. But let me tighten up on the IAM and Presence since that was our main focus today just to give you a better idea of what's going on and what's going on behind the scenes. As you can see, there's there's quite a group of servers here on the back end. Now, the most basic system does not require this many servers. As a matter of fact, if you were only going to do IM and presence, you could get away with one server only running Microsoft Office Communication Server Standard Edition. That's 2007 R2. And, of course, you would most likely need uh, – a decent firewall, most likely uh, Microsoft ISA 2006 SP1 or later, such as the the new system TMG or UAG. Uh, like I said, this is a lot of detail, and this is this more closely uh, represents what Engage has implemented. But this, like I said, does not have to indicate what uh, you, as an you know an individual company, would stand up if it was for a small setup. Our system in particular is a hosted system, so every one of us connects as if we're an external client. There are no internal clients. So if you're looking out here to the far left, this is how all of Engage employees connect. It's also how all of the Engage hosted clients connect. So everybody connects from the outside. Um, let's just call it the Internet. And nobody is up here on the inside, as this graphic indicates, because 
our system is hosted in a, a colo facility in a, in a data center, so there are no internal clients. So as you can imagine, if everyone if everyone is connecting externally, that there's quite a lot of uh, work with certificates, uh, security, things of that nature that goes in to building out a system like this. But if you're doing this strictly internally, it certainly simplifies the process. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, I think we had promised a handout, and that's going to follow to those who joined us today. Uh, that, that handout will likely include a link to this poster and a couple of other items, along with the information we promised uh, regarding how to select a TSP, a telephony service provider, if you do choose to integrate voice with your OCS solution. So again, thanks for joining us today. And that will be the end of the session. Thank you.